Welcome back to Hannity. Tomorrow, the U.N. General Assembly is scheduled to vote on a resolution opposing any recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. This comes after President Trump, earlier this month, boldly announced his intentions to move our embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley is warning that the U.S. will be taking names. And today, during a cabinet meeting, President Trump doubled down on Ambassador Haley's message. Take a look. I like the message that Nikki sent yesterday at the United Nations for all of these nations that take our money and then they vote against us at the Security Council or they vote against us potentially at the Assembly. They take hundreds of millions of dollars and even billions of dollars and then they vote against us. Well, we're watching those votes. Let them vote against us. We'll save a lot. We don't care. But this isn't like it used to be, where they could vote against you and then you pay them hundreds of millions of dollars and nobody knows what they're doing. So, Nikki, that was the right message that you and I agreed to be sent yesterday. And I've had a lot of good comment on it, believe me. People are tired of the United States, the people that live here are great citizens that love this country. They're tired of this country being taken advantage of, and we're not going to be taken advantage of any longer. And joining us now is Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Dannon. All right, uh, Danny, I, I, I love the idea of taking names. I love the idea of, you know, you're not going to do this to us anymore. But is it anyone's business where the United States decides to put its embassy in a foreign country? Good evening, Judge. The U.N. has no right to tell Israel where the capital of Israel should be. And the U.N. has no right to tell the U.S. where well, to put the embassy of the U.S. in Israel. It says the audacity of the U.N. must stop. And I think tomorrow we will see another session of bashing, not only of Israel, bashing of the U.S. And no resolution that will pass can change the reality that Jerusalem is, as always will be, the capital of the state of Israel. You cannot change that. You know, so many presidents have promised that they were going to do it. What is it about this president that, I mean, obviously he's, 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 he's much stronger, but, but why would they promise it and, and not deliver? What was the harm to them? Were they afraid of these other countries? We see a different kind of leadership, and we appreciate that. It was a courageous, bold decision of President Trump. And not only that, also the veto of Ambassador Haley in the Security Council. Last year, I was in the Security Council, last December, and there was another resolution. And the previous administration supported that shameful resolution. We see the change. We appreciate it. This is the way to handle the U.N., to come with your values, with your ideology, and to change the U.N. We need to reform the U.N. And, and clearly the president is going to do that. He talked about it with NATO, and now he's talking about it with the U.N. And, but what, what money, uh, I mean, to, are there, is there money to individual countries that can be impacted by, you know, the United States saying, you don't vote with us, we're not going to give you money anymore? Well, that's for the president and ambassador Haley to decide about that. But there's a lot of hypocrisy in the U.N. And if you give money to those countries, I think you should demand from them. That's what we do when we support countries. I called many ambassadors today, and I told them, we support you. We share technology, cybersecurity, defense. So now we need you tomorrow at the vote. If you do not support us, we will also take notes. Why? I mean, even the United Kingdom, I mean, you know, they're, they're always supposed to be considered an ally. Why do they feel that they should have a say as to where Israel has its capital or the United States puts its uh, embassy? They think that they support the peace process, but it's exactly the opposite. They don't support the peace process. They support the Palestinian ideology of incitement, of running away from a dialogue. The only way to move forward is to have direct negotiations between the Israeli and the Palestinians. And the president's decision is the right move, because now that Palestinians understand that there is a new leadership, they have to decide whether they're joining the negotiations or we are moving on without them. And so, I mean, by, by, uh, by, by saying that, you know, this is going to disrupt the peace process, that's just their excuse. In fact, it hasn't gone forward for a long time. Maybe this is the way to do it. Look what happened in the last 20 years. So many emissaries, so many uh, summits. Nothing happened. I think this is the right approach, and I think the president will be engaged with the peace process. I think so. Anyway, thank you so much, thank Danny you,